Hi, I'm Chris from Homecode. I remember going in to teach ancient Egypt with a group of grade fives and seeing that in the class I was teaching, there was still the same textbook that I used when I was in grade five, when I learned it. Now, it's not to say that um, history has suddenly changed, but we've got a lot more to use now um, in order to explore ancient Egypt. We can even explore it on Google Earth. And that was always uh, one of my favorite things to do with my classes. And man, they would discover the most amazing things. So in this lesson, we'll be making our very own hieroglyphics translator. We'll be able to type in our name or a word and then have it print out the hieroglyphics. It's a super fun one uh, that makes use of a lot of great functionality in Scratch. So if you want a full lesson plan with the printouts, outcomes, and thinking routines, then please do head over to my teacher marketplace, link in the description below. Very quickly as well, if you're a parent or a teacher, then please hang on to the very end of the video because I've got a Udemy course that I've made just for you and I wanna tell you a bit about it. And here we go. So I've gone to scratch.mit.edu. I went to my stuff because I signed in. And here's an example of what we are going to make. Now I did a few little extra things, added effects. Um, we won't do that, but you can always come to this project and see what it's all about. So we start off by clicking go. Then our skeleton, um, who I thought could be a good representation of a mummy, asks, what is your name or what do you want to translate? I type my name in and then... There we go. So it's cool, right? And printed, and it even changes the color for each and every one. Okay, so let's go to create to start our very own new one. And for this one, you can, you're welcome to change the sprites, but I'm just gonna keep mine as the cat. Now let's just quickly look at what we want to do. You're not gonna be doing this. This is just for us to take some notes. So we wanna have our sprites ask a question and we are going to use that answer. So then the user has input, then takes each question, uh, takes each question, takes each letter and puts it in a list. Then use that list and have it change uh, the letter into a symbol and then stamp that symbol and move over a little bit so that we can see absolutely all of it. Okay, so that's what we're aiming for. That's what we want to do. Okay, let's come back over here. So first thing that we want is for our sprite to ask a question. So in order for anything to happen, we need an event. An event tells us when certain code should run. So notice I've got my cat sprite selected over here. I'm gonna go over to events and choose the when the green flag clicked event. So any code that I attach to here is gonna run when I click the green flag, which obviously now doesn't do anything because we've got nothing attached to it. Yeah, so what we want to happen is to ask, what's your name? So into sensing, ask, what's your name? and wait. Now, if I type something in there now, then it doesn't do anything with it. It has actually stored it in this variable. Now, a variable is like a container, something that you can just store information in and then take it out and change it and mess around with it. We're gonna be using a different type of variable now, one that is called a list. Okay, so, uh, we're gonna ask, what's your name and wait. Now we wanna create a list over here. So you go to variables and make a list. Let's call this list letter in word. Now you can obviously type this uh, how you want, but if you're gonna get onto different kinds of coding, then I recommend that you start using this just as one word because that's the convention and necessary in other types of coding. So we'll have letter in word. I know I spelt it wrong. <laughs> letter in word. And there you can see popping uh, in over here. And now what this has is uh, nothing at the moment, but we're able to store information in there, store numbers, and we can see there's the length of it. See, it's got four items inside here, which I can go ahead and delete. We're not gonna be using it like that. But what we are gonna say is, as we start our program, we wanna get rid of anything that is stored in there so that we don't accidentally have strange things sort of show up. So we got that, that's where we're gonna be storing all of our letters inside. Now we need something that keeps track of which letter we are on. So to do that, we're gonna make a variable, let's call this one letters. 
And there we have it's created and now we can set its value. So give it a value. We'll start it at one because we want to start when we uh, eventually get the answer. We want to start at the very first letter. Okay, so now we've got delete all of that, ask that. We want something to repeat. We want to, uh, it's called iterating through this array. Well, first we need to create the list or the array is how you also might hear it. Um, so to do that, let's go to uh, control over here and I'm gonna drag a repeat block in here. Now, any code that we put inside here will repeat as many times as we put, you know, it could repeat that many times if we really wanted it to. But we want it to repeat as many times as there are letters in the answer. Okay, so this is gonna seem a little bit complicated, but it's well, what's nice about Scratch is it just kind of makes logical sense. So we're gonna go over to operators over here and under operators, we've got a little function over here that checks the length of, at the moment it says apple, but we wanted to check the length of answer. We're able to just drop that in there, see how it highlights, we drop it length of answer. So we want this, all the code inside here to repeat for the length of the answer. So if our answer is, or our name is 10 letters, then this will repeat 10 times and it'll change depending on who types in there. Okay, now what we wanna do, this is the complicated part. This is I think the, probably the most complicated part. Stick with me, it is going to make sense when we read it out together. So we want to insert a letter from uh, in, into a position over here in our list from answer at the position of letters, which we're gonna increase every time. <laughs> I know that made very little sense right now, but let's, let's do it and then you'll see how it works. So we're gonna to go to variables again, we're gonna come down to our list functions over here and we're gonna say insert, so if we just ran this, it would insert thing at position one of letter in word and it would do that as many times as we've got uh, letters in our answer. But we don't want it to do that, we want it to do it a specific amount of times. So here under um, operators, again, we've got just such handy functions over here. We're gonna be looking for the one that says letter number of whatever we have over here. So we wanna do it letter, whichever value this is. So letter letters of answer, which you can see at the moment, if we just drag this in, be letter, uh, letters, so letter, the first letter of, and then we want our answer. So this is letter one of answer, which if it was my name, Chris, then it would be C. So we're gonna insert letter letters of answer at one. We don't want it just at one, we want it to be changing every time that we change letters as well. So now this is just gonna keep on doing the exact same one. So what we can do, and this is a neat little trick, is that we change letters by one. So each time it runs through, so change letters by one. So the first time that it does it, letters is one already. So it inserts the letter one of answer that the person has typed in, our user has typed in at letters, that's position one of letter in word, then change letters by one. So it comes back to the repeat loop if there's more than one letter and it checks, have we finished? Have we repeated this amount of times? No, okay. So insert letter two of answer at two of letter in word. Change it about one, that three, and then it repeats and it just keeps on going. Let's, let's see if that works so far. So if we type that in, Chris, let's see. And there we have it. So it's put C-H-R-I-S and it tells us that the length is, five, length is five. That's how many times it has repeated. And the value of letters over here, because we kept changing it by one, is now six, because it ran through it five times, changed this by one, saw, so, okay, we've reached the length of our answer. We don't need to go on anymore. Great, now we actually need to do something with this. So in order to do that, we need to add in our sprite. So what you're gonna do is go and look for an image that has uh, hieroglyphics in it. I found this one and this one's really, really great. I recommend this one uh, where you can download the SVG. Now that is a, a vector kind of graphic, which means that we're able to just select large portions of this and just delete it quite easily. Okay, so you'll download it. Once you've downloaded it, then you can come over to here to choose a sprite and then you choose upload sprites and then you can look for it. Ah, there, mine is uh, there already. So I could upload that one, but I have already done it. 
and I want to show you what the finished product looks like. So I've actually stored this in my backpack, which is another great perk of signing in, making sure that you have created a profile. And here mine is sorted in here. And now what I can do for my backpack is just drag it across into here. I'm gonna show you how I eventually got to this. Don't worry about all of this code. I'm actually going to uh, delete all of that because we'll be doing that together. So if I've uploaded this, then I made sure that I've got it selected. And then you'll see under costumes, you're gonna start off with just this which I'm gonna make sure that I, I can see absolutely all of it. You can see I've got a master over here and then what you're gonna to do to extract each of these and give them their own costume. Um, think of these as frames of, in an animation. So to do that, I'm gonna right click my master, make sure that you always have one master one over here, the main one. Yours is gonna be named something different. I named it master just so that I could track it down nice and easily. Then you right click it and click duplicate. It makes another one over there and then making sure we've got our arrow selected over here we can drag across everything that we don't want and then it selects it and then you just push delete and then it's gone so then you do that so for example if we were doing a over here on this one then i can delete that and then i drag my symbol here to the very center of that crosshair over there. And then up here is where I change its name. Now you'll see the naming convention that I've stuck to, which is gonna be really important for the way that we do it over here. I'm actually gonna delete that one and just show you how I did it for Z. So Z over here, you can see I've typed in as its costume name. What I've also done in case people do put in capital letters like I have done, is you actually duplicate each and every one um, of these letters, so I took Z and I right clicked and I duplicated it and then I gave that one the name of capital Z because we're going to have um, the sprite look at the letter in each word and then, uh, sorry, the letter in the word and the answer over here and then match this up with a costume name and then change to that costume name, stamp it and then we'll see the resulting answer over there. Okay, so uh, let's have a look at what we can do over here. Um, at the moment, we need to know when this information is ready. So to do that, we're gonna come back to our sprite and we are going to send a message, broadcast a message. And here under events, we've got broadcast message. Now let's just leave it as broadcast message one, but you can create a new message and name it whatever you'd like. I, I know for mine, I, I named it translate or something like that. But we only got one message, so it's actually quite easy to keep track of. So when this is all done, when letter and word is stored up in there, then send a message, broadcast a message. In the background, we won't see it. And then when this receives that message, I can see we, we can't see it at the moment. I've just made it invisible. Um, which you can do, it's gonna be helpful along the way. So just make sure you have it selected and click don't see, or see, don't see. So we want the event when I receive message one. So only when I receive message one, then we're gonna start doing stuff. Okay, I'm, I don't wanna see letter and word and letters anymore. So I'm gonna come over to variables quickly and I'm gonna untick those so we don't see those. They're, they're restored in the background. We don't really need to see them. Okay, so we've got our sprite selected over here and what we want is to reset letters because we're going to be using that again. So set letters to one once again. Let's grab a repeat block, which is going to once again repeat the length of letters, uh, however many letters we have in our list now. Actually, let me just show this again to repeat as many letters as we have in here. So to do that, we can use this over here. We don't need to create a whole new one. We've got length of letter in Word. So if there are 20 in here, then uh, 20 letters in here in our original answer, then this would repeat 20 times. Okay. Now, what we want to happen is to have our sprite change to the costume that correlates with the letter. So to do that, let's go to looks over here where we're able to switch costumes and we're gonna say switch costume to, hmm. Well, we need to find the item in here of our letter in word. We want it to change to the costume that we have over here, which is, I hope you can start to see already a little bit why we named it like this. So it's gonna look for, we'll have it look for uh, Z, for example. Or in this case, let's use that one that's actually there. We'll look for C, capital C over there. So look for that one and then change the costume to that. And we're gonna do something with it in a moment. So uh, let's go to here again, item number, 
whichever we need to choose over here, item letters. So let's grab this variable again, because we are gonna have it. So grab the first letter of letter in word C and switch to that costume. Okay, now we need to actually do something with that. For that, we're gonna add in a special extension over here. Uh, mine's added in already because I dragged in this previous block from my backpack. So to do that, click on here where it says add extension. We've got lots of different ones over here. You're gonna choose pen, which I've already added in. So I'm gonna say from here, this is where we can draw, write, stamp. Um, you'll see what we do with stamp is whenever it changes the costume, then it just stamps it on there. It doesn't create a whole new sprite. Um, so it doesn't get all clogged up with that. So I'm gonna say, as we start, whenever we receive, this, receive the message, erase the previous message so that we're not uh, just kind of stamping over and over and over. Then we'll have switch costume to item letters of letter and word. As soon as you've changed to that, then stamp it. Let's see what that does so far. What's your name? Hmm, apparently it's Horus. And there we've got it and it's actually stamped it, but it stamped it all over each other, all in the same place. So we want uh, our letters, uh, that's not changing. So it's only doing the first one of this one and just doing that four times. We wanna make sure that uh, letters actually changes by one each time. So let's make sure that letters changes by one. Uh, let's try that again. This time I'll spell my name correctly. And there we can see it all stamps all on top of each other. So let's have it move over a little bit each time. So I've gone to motion and I've grabbed move 10 steps. You could change the X value if you want it as well. I'm just gonna use this because it's nice and easy to understand. And I'll choose 35 steps because um, I think that's just gonna work nicely. So again, make sure that you have that invisible, otherwise you're always going to be showing one random letter along the way. Now let's see if that works. What's your name? In case you don't know yet, there we go, and it prints it out nicely. And that's basically how it looks. A lot of other fun things that you can do if you look at my original project. Please make sure that you uh, share yours and then drop in my comments that's, that you have done that. I would really, really like to see what you have made. <laughs> I, I enjoyed that one. But I actually found that some of the stuff we were doing is a bit easier with typed out coding like JavaScript or, or Python. But either way, um, the logic is exactly the same. So I've put together a Udemy course for parents and teachers who wanna use coding in their teaching, but they don't wanna spend a ridiculous amount of money on a subscription service or new devices and all sorts of fancy things. So in this course, I take you through a foundation and why we have to teach coding, how to understand the fundamentals with movement based on games, and then using free tools to integrate coding into any lesson that you are teaching. You can click on the link in the description below to see more and buy it. Uh, or if you'd like to see if there's a coupon that you could use, then please email me at chris at homecode.co.za or drop a comment below. Thanks and keep exploring.